Welcome to Virtual Coffee with Don Rickaba, the Note Queen, where we talk about owner financing and notes. Financial solutions, one mom and pop to another. Axel, is there any other questions or anyone else want to unmute themselves and just speak up and, and just talk? I, We've got 20 minutes left. I have a question. Um, I, I was wondering, in our area, the, there's just possibilities for rehab coming out the ears and the market is still really great. Okay. So we've we've been able to to flip um, and do well, except um, since because of the short term capital gains, I'm holding now um, a couple, and I'm out of I'm out of credit line. I, I've I've done some some good projects, but I've used my credit line and I've used my money. Probably I'm probably a little. A little tight. I'm all right because they've been good, and if I had to sell them, there's plenty of money in them. But I'm getting good rent off them. I guess I'm just wondering um, how to how to get in a, a situation where there's people who want to, like when Ed was talking about rehab loans. I mean, I I would like to almost be the construction management, like. Um, I see the places, I understand how to do it, and I've got people I can do it quick and make good money, but I don't have the money myself. Does that? Okay, hey, are you, is this Deirdre? Yeah. Hey, Hi, John. how are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm sorry I'm missing the meeting. I am too, I am too. It was great having you last year. Uh, but, you know, great question. These are exactly the types of things that, you know, the property paper, you know, how those things dance back and forth. Yeah. And it's so awesome. So uh, this great conversation. So what I'm hearing you say is, hey, in my market, where I forget, are you in Montana or? Yeah, I'm Wyoming, actually. Oh, Wyoming. Okay, yeah, yeah. So you're in Wyoming. You're saying, hey, the market's still good. I can, uh, there, it's ripe for the pickings. You can still make a great, make flip. But, um, but the short-term capital gains are killing you. So uh, you're trying to say, at least on them, what, for a year or more? Yeah, yeah. And I, I, I see all these opportunities, but, I, I mean, there's just tons of opportunity. Cody is a tourist tent. I mean, there's tons of opportunity, uh -huh. but I, I'm just one person with, with not enough money. <laughs> well, that's great. I am just one person. At, it, it's just interesting. In our businesses, isn't this so true? I mean, uh, well... I, I agree that uh, there's times when you can be equity rich, but cash poor. And it, and it really, of all the things, it's like, it, it really binds me when, when I'm not li as liquid as I want to be. It really, yes. cramps my style. it really cramps my style. So even though I can go, oh, I've got money sitting in the bank. I don't trust the bank. I got to get it working. But then if I don't have enough <laughs> liquid, then I just, I feel bad for myself and I feel all stymied with my creativity. So yes, I, I totally get you there. But, you know, that's, you know, I am sure that Walter and Quincy and, you know, the conversations that we'll have, and I'm sure that we had last year, you know, can speak to trying to figure out legal ways to get some of this stuff inside your self-directed accounts so that you don't have a taxable event at all. I mean, we bought a property inside of our 401k for 60. We're all in at 60. I think that after the, I mean, we do have a, uh, you know, an interesting situation with it, but the market value is like 200. So, yeah. Yeah. Like I'm in it at 60 and it when once I clear up title, there's a quiet title action that I'll eventually have to take care of. But, um, my gosh. And then someone's going, Oh, you're going to have high taxes. And nope. <laughs> no, nope. because it's inside of my self-directed, you know, 401k. So, uh, well, how do you, if you, you know, um, but, but I, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole okay. one because I'm not as articulate in that space as, you know, people that have been doing it longer than me. And number two, I think let's, let's go back because this feeds it to what kind of Ed was talking about in the beginning. But so you need to get liquid. You, you got situations that make sense. You're trying to reduce your taxes, you know, make that reasonable so that your taxes don't eat up everything. Uh, but you need to get liquid. So uh, do you are, do you have 
you have a line of credit, so that means that these are free and clear, there's more recorded mortgages against them? Um, yeah, both of them. Um, the one we just did, we did, a, we did a mortgage on, and it's a super good deal, but I had to, I didn't have my own money for all of it, so I used the rest of my line of credit. So my line of credit's kind of maxed. I'm, I'm at the end of the line of credit. The one, um, so I don't know what exactly, I guess the, the long and short, I'm out of money, but there's opportunities all around just now. See that, actually, this is, this is fantastic because now it's not just sort of a nice thing, but you're gonna have to learn how to use other people's money. And this is a phenomenal thing to have to have, like, do you remember my story where like by the time I finally figured out what I was doing from my nursing job to this no business thing, I was out of my own money. And you know what that forced me to do? Figure out how to leverage other people's money. And, and that's like, I have none of my own money, <laughs> except for I had become what I'd become over the years of investing in myself and you know, whatever that, that trail means. But so this is great because people need to know that if you don't have to have your own money. So I, okay, I'm just going to like throw off ideas is you can have, in fact, Jim Ingersoll is going to talk about this uh, next week about JVs and how to arrange joint venture uh, arrangements with people. So yeah, you give up some equity, but then you don't have the debt service and you can ride something out a lot better. Okay. Uh, and, and like for me, when I'm acquiring, I, I try to, the most I can do is try to get owner financing, try to get the sellers to be my bank. So I don't have to get a line of credit. I don't have to get a bank loan. I don't even have to get private, private money. I don't have to tie up all my own capital. Try to get owner financing on more of these things. Now it may, you go, no, all of the deals are REOs or whatever. That's fine. But you know, I'm just saying, I always try to make my, I'm always like, I want, that mom and pop seller to be my bank. That is always, whether I plan on flipping it in six months or holding it for 60 years, I want owner financing. That's always like, oh, you know, unless it's just like, oh, price is great. Yeah, I'll cash you out and I'll bring in a partner. I'll borrow money or bring in a partner. Um, the other thing is, you why, why couldn't you, um, and I want to say, I want to say that there was a guy that I was doing business with uh, a while back and he, he always held them for two years exactly for that long-term capital gains conversation. So what he would do is he would put, he would uh, do lease options with tenants. So that is sort of like an owner carry, but, but he was still on title. Okay. We're putting it in a land trust to, to do the same thing. So uh, that's why if I know I'm going to take keep something and I'm going to owner financing, I like putting it in a land trust. Number one, you know, nobody, I don't like my personal name on things. I, I want to be a poor beggar as far, as far as anyone looks me up online. I, I hope I look like I own nothing. That's my goal. Um, and so, and also, so, so then you can get someone in there, uh, like on a lease option sort of a deal. And then you don't actually execute that option you know, till later and it may be, uh, or if you could, or if you could create a note to them, if they have a ginormous down payment, then you can create one, maybe two notes. And then you, to get liquid, you sell off the front. The okay. Time, maybe you keep your equity, you know, in the, in the second remainder portion. Does that make sense? So okay. you can structure an owner carry if, uh, with people and, and, and putting those together is pretty important. And, and depending on your market, you have to sort of be sensitive to what's realistic. But um, that's a super, you know, common thing where people are like, okay, well, to to sell it, I'm going to need to carry, uh, but then I need to get some cash. I don't need all my cash. I don't need all my profit. I just need some seed capital to keep doing. Then you know, to create because if you can take down a property, you sell it on a premium. On owner financing, you keep your profit, may, may, you keep the down payment, so you get some of your money back, and then you keep a second or the remainder interest in a note, but you sell off the front end of it just to get liquid again. But now you take that and you make another deal, 
and this is hanging out there. This is money that's going to come to you down the road, right? And then you move that seed capital and create another remainder interest in another second. And then you take that, you sell the note. You know, it, you can joint venture, you can borrow money. I think the joint venture or selling off front end partials or a, a small um, a first when you're holding a second, I think that can be really a really good strategy. You've been listening to Virtual Coffee with Don Rickabaugh. For more, please visit notequeen.com.